Just oh, right. Sorry. There we go. Kim, can you be letting people in? I am. Thank you so much. All right. Well, hey, welcome, guys. We've got a special treat today, as you know. I know um, hopefully you saw the announcement, but we've got Sean Kokoska with us here. He's visiting um, right out of San Diego. Where do you live? You're in Austin now, though, Sean, right? Yeah, yeah. That's where my home is. Oh, yes. and, um, okay. We've got yeah. a second home out here on Mission Beach in San Diego. Oh. Uh, yeah. I'll show you guys my view. Look at the view. It's not so bad. Not so bad. <laughs> That's a nice place yeah. for a second home, I'd say, Sean. It doesn't suck. We get out here as much as we possibly can. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, if those of you, if you're not familiar with Sean Kukoska, let me just tell you a little bit about him. So Sean's been in the real estate game for, you know, what, 20, 25 years. He and his team, he had a team, he and his team were... 32 years. Okay, you, was, you were a child. Um, but they were selling about... 250 to 400 homes a year so you guys are in the right place if you want to come learn from the master that he is he has sold over 4,000 homes you know totaling over a billion dollars in sales but in addition to that now he's got icon coaching he also did all the training materials and the curriculum for the number one bestseller that was on the new york time and um in the wall street journal the number one best-selling book um the one thing if you haven't read the one thing, I'd highly encourage you to read that. So he did all the training curriculum for that. Um, so we are super honored, Sean, to have you here. And, you know, we all know we're in the shifting market. If you don't know, you're going to know soon enough um, because we're all seeing, you know, many, many areas across the country, we're seeing a shifting market. Um, and Sean, 32 years in the business, he's been through it all. He's trained through it all. Um, his team, how to maneuver through that. So we were having a little bit of a conversation about what to train on today. And, um, you know, Sean suggested, I agreed that, you know, for sale by owners expired. So for sale by owners has always been around, but expires, most of us haven't seen in the last couple of years, right? But we're going to start seeing that again, you know? And so Sean is the master at, at so many things really, but he's, he's so great at scripts and training. And so we're just honored to have you here, Sean, um, to to train us today on for sale owners and expires and just, you know, what, what to do during this transition in market for agents, you know, that weren't around back 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. Well, Kathy, thank you for having me. I appreciate that. <clears throat> and welcome. Just a real quick question. How many of you guys are starting to experience a lengthening of the number of days on market with your listings? Anyone? All right. Anybody else experiencing a reduction of the average list price to sales price ratio? Anybody experiencing that? Yeah, so the market is shifting. There's no doubt about that. And I think the number one challenge that we all face today is that anybody who had two brain cells over the course of the last three years refinanced and probably locked in a rate somewhere around 3%. So if they sell this house, then they're going to go buy another. If they need a mortgage, well, then they're going to step up to six and a quarter percent, right? Now, when I got into the industry, interest rates were 12.75%. And when they hit 7%, you guys, we were all celebrating. We're like, oh my God, it's amazing. Never experienced interest rates this low. And yet uh, here we are at six and a quarter percent. People are whining, complaining, griping about what's going on. So uh, there's certain segments in the market that are going to be coming back. No doubt about that. Notice of, of default. How many of you guys work in notice of default lists? Anyone? Good, good. Cheryl, I saw your hand went up. Fantastic. Now, I would encourage you guys to see Everything starts with list building. Would you all agree with that? I mean, if you don't know who you're going to call, you're not going to call anybody. So I'd encourage you to reach out to Land Voice. In fact, if you go to landvoice.com forward slash SOAR, S-O-A-R, you'll be able to get 30 days of their pro level of data for just $30. So this is a, a trial run. See if you like this. But what they're going to do, they're going to provide you with all the lists that you need to call. They'll, call it, they'll give you every for sale by owner, their email address, their phone number, their address, every expired listing. You're going to have it by 7 a.m. the following day after it expires. So if it expired at midnight last night, you'd have the list right now to be able to contact these expired listings. Plus, they'll give you the notice of default list. So anybody who hits the NOD, they're going to give you the name, the phone number, email address, and address of the, of the person. So everything starts with list building. Oh, by the way, They'll give you neighborhood data for server prospecting as well. So today we're going to talk a little bit about for sale by owners. Uh, how many of you guys excited to call it uh, for sale by owners? Anyone? I am. Now, let me tell you the reason. 
these people have already raised their hand. They said that they would like to sell this property. No doubt about that. Let me get rid of this background noise. Sorry about this, guys. There we go. All right. So they've already raised their hand. They are motivated to do something in real estate. They just don't want to pay a commission. Now it's up to you to convince them that maybe that's not the best way to go about it. So to me, for sale by uh, FSBO, it's an acronym. Stands for set fastest source of business opportunity. Gang, there was never a year that I didn't list and sell at least 50% for sale by owners in my career. For sale by owners were my bread and butter. And I want to explain a little bit about how to work with them. See, for sale by owners will never set a listing presentation with you. They just won't. Now, unless they're just fed up with the whole process and they said to their significant other, you know what, I'm just tired of this. I'm tired of staying home on the weekends and showing our house and taking call after call after call. And the next realtor who calls me, we're going to list our property with them. They're never going to send a listing presentation with you, right? Now it does happen, but it's very rare. So it's not a listing presentation game. It's actually a problem presentation. Now setting an appointment to meet with a for sale by owner is probably one of the easier things that you'll ever do. I mean, all you have to do is just simply contact them and ask them, can I preview your property, compare your features and benefits to the needs of my buyers. It's easy to get in the door. It truly is. But once you get in the door, what you say and how you say it makes all the difference. And really, there's only three things in which we can control in real estate sales. Seriously, only three. Think about all the things outside of your control. You can't control the buyer's credit score, their cash position, the inventory in the market, the interest rates, the seller's motivation, the location of the property. You can't control any of these things. Three things in which you can control. Number one, it's what you say. Number two, it's how you say it. And with mere words, you guys, in real estate, you can make over a million dollars a year selling real estate. And the third thing, which is the most critical element, is you can control how many people you say it to. So again, the three things, you can control what you say, how you say it, and how many people you say it to. Now, how many of you guys want more appointments? Anyone? Yeah, of course, we all do, right? We all want more appointments. Now, in order to have more appointments, all you need to do is create more conversations, and I hate to make it so simple. Now, how many of you guys want more contracts? We all want more contracts, right? So in order to have more contracts, you need more appointments, and in order to have more appointments, you just need to create more conversations. Because you want more money in your bank account balance. And I'm certain you all do, right? Well, you need more contracts, which means you need more appointments. So let's reverse engineer it down to the one thing in which you can control. And that's how many people you talk to. That's it. Just creating more conversations. Okay. That is the secret sauce to real estate sales. Now, here's the good news. Lead generation can effectively be leveraged. The bad news is you probably should master it first so that you can train somebody up to make it happen for you. What I'm talking about is ISAs. OSAs, now ISA, Inside Sales Associate, OSA, Outbound Sales Associate, somebody who's going to get on the phones and proactively lead generate on your behalf to set more listing appointments. So we're talking about for sale by owners, and, and I want to walk you through the psychology of listing for sale by owners, because there is a psychology behind it. So if, if you choose to, go ahead and draw out this, uh, this diagram right here, this box, the four boxes. In the upper left-hand corner, I want you to write in the words positive present. And what I'm referencing here is their mindset. So you can every for sale by owner is in fact in a positive present mindset. They believe that their current actions with their plastic sign that they bought at Lowe's and you know, they got the Sharpie and wrote their, their, their phone number in on it uh, with the color brochure that they created, the ad that they have on Zillow, FSBO.com, Craigslist, they believe that their current actions are going to bring them the positive future that they see, which is selling their house without paying any commission. Now, here's one of the greatest challenges in working with for sale by owners, and I see realtors do this all the time. They say, why well, understand you want to sell your house all on your own? And if you list with me, I'll get it done faster. I'll put more money in your pocket. And gang, that is positive present to positive future. Now, this is not how we change people's minds. In fact, let's just put an X over that because we can't go that direction. In fact, what we have to do is bring them and kind of pull them down into the negative to go from a positive present mindset to open the window of doubt that perhaps their current actions are not going to lead them to the positive future that they see. Now, once we get them firmly rooted in a negative present mindset, then it's about pushing them to a negative future. 
So we've all heard the phrase, you gotta meet people where they're at, right? And I, I, I grabbed hold of that phrase. I mean, it made total sense to me. Yet here's what I found. Most people, they have no idea where they're at. So how can you meet them there? So what you've got to do is you've got to kind of guide them to where you want them to be and then lead them to where you want them to go. And once we get them to this negative future mindset, then it's all about the positive future, which is listing with you. So you reach out to the for sale manager. You set an appointment to get in the door. You're to tour the property with the for sale by owner and you're going to take great notes. You can ask questions, you're going to compliment them. You're going to focus on building rapport. And once you believe that you're in this position of rapport, then I'd encourage you to leverage a script that I call the single greatest advantage. Now, I learned this from a guy named Jerry Bresser. He wrote a book back in 1974 called List More, Sell More. And the principles apply today, just like they did in 1974. And the single greatest advantage script is very simple. So you're in rapport with the, with the FISPO. And you say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. For Sale Lander, let me just ask you a question. What is the single greatest advantage of you going for sale by owner instead of listing with a realtor? How do you guys already know the answer? It's to what? It's to save the commission. So you say, well, I understand that. Yet let me ask, what is the single greatest advantage for a buyer to buy a for sale buyer instead of working with a professional realtor? Is it possibly to save the same commission that you hope to save? So again, guys, it's about moving them to that negative present, right? So we're starting to open that window of doubt in their mind. Then we're going to segue into the next script that I call the four types of buyers. Now, this is being recorded. I've got this fully transcribed. It's part of our program called Accelerated Breakthrough. It's in session number four. Yet, uh, let me walk you through the four types of buyers. So, so you just segue very naturally and you say, well, Mr. Rooms for sale by owner, would it be okay with you if I shared with you the four different types of buyers? I think it'll be beneficial. Well, the first is the first time home buyers. Then there's the motivated buyers. There's the investors. And then what I like to call looking youths, okay? So let's talk about for sale buyers. Now these people are, excuse me, let's talk about first time home buyers, excuse me. These people are nervous, they're anxious, they're timid, they're stressed out, they don't wanna make a mistake. Let me just ask, do you think they're gonna go out all on their own, all in for sale by owners, one at a time, unrepresented to write and negotiate their own contract or do you think they might go to a professional realtor? You know, somebody who's done this 4,000 times in his career, probably a realtor, would you agree? The second type is motivated buyers, and we all want these guys, right? Their home just went under contract. They got two days to find a replacement. And if they don't, they might lose the contract. Or maybe they're a relocation buyer. Their employer flew in just for the weekend, and then they got to go, go, go until they find the right house. Let me just ask, do you think they're going to go out, you know, one at a time, calling on for sale by others? Or do you think they might go to a professional realtor, somebody who can show 30 homes a day if necessary until they find the right one? And it's probably a realtor. Would you agree? <clears throat> so the third type are investors. Now, I don't know about you guys yet. I've attended real estate investor seminars where the speakers train investors how to pray upon for sale by owners. They'll say, say things like, well, if I can close by the end of the month, we come down to the price. Or what if I paid all cash? How low would you go? And the fourth type, well, I call them looking news. For some crazy reason, HGTV is just not enough for these people. They have no intention to buy, but they just love looking at real estate. They'll say things like, well, let me sleep on it, I'll call you tomorrow, or let me talk to my lender and I'll get back to you and you'll never hear from them. See, out of the four different types of buyers, there's really only one type that buy for sale by owners, and that's investors. And yes, investors are great, yet they want to buy your home for 10 cents on the dollar. I look at it like this. If you walked into a jewelry store, Let's say you want to buy a new watch. You can see it there in the last case. Never been worn. It's still in the box, right? It's got the price tag right there on it. I'll bet you'd expect to pay it for rough retail value. Would you agree with that? Of course, yeah. Let's take that same watch. Let's take the receipt that shows the amount of money you paid for that watch. Let's tape it to the top of the box. Never been worn. Price tag still on it. And let's put it in a garage sale. Well, undoubtedly, you expect to fetch far less than a jewelry store because Anytime we buy direct from an owner, we just expect a better deal. 
Now we're going to shift them again from the negative present to a negative future. And it's a really simple statement. We just shared in our statistics. You know, National Association of Realtors states that their sale by owners receive 12% less than those that list with a professional realtor. And then the close for the century, you're familiar with what I do to get properly yeah. sold quickly. Why is for the very positive and then still required? So again, it's about that positive future. So what you've done is you've converted this pop by two for sale by owner to tour their property and compare the features and benefits of their home to the needs of new buyers. You've converted that into a listing opportunity. So you say, well, no. And so you say, well, luckily I'm here. Remember the psychology of the sale, positive present to negative present. Once you get them to a negative present, then it's about a negative future, a negative future then to positive future, which is listing with you. All right, so I've got all of those scripts, the scripts totally script transcribed. They're there for you to practice, rehearse, and I'll tell you what, practice is one of the most important aspects of our job. And a lot of people, they look at their, their practice time kind of like play time. Now, I'll do that when I have time, or I'll do it when I think about it. No, I want you to be on purpose with this. In fact, I hired a guy named Billy McLaughlin to come out and uh, do a presentation or a, a show, I should say, for a little program that we put together called uh, Mega Camp for Kelly Williams. And we have thousands and thousands of agents in the office. Now, Billy McLaughlin, he was a, a guitar player. And yet, Hi. in his early 20s, oh, Okay, so he had poured himself into learning how to play the guitar at a very high level since he was just a kid. Yet he had this crippling disease. He couldn't hold a pick any longer. So what did he do? He learned how to play the guitar with one hand. Now think about this. Anybody who has an experience with playing guitar, you recognize that if you press your finger down on electric guitar, right? You press your finger down on the string, right on the fret, in the right spot, it makes the sound as though you started the string, right? So. He learned how to play the guitar with only his left hand and sure he would reach over with his finger and he'd hit a few strings at the same time but man it sounded like he was playing the guitar with 12 hands not just one amazing so after the fact i interviewed him and i said i said so billy tell me do you love your work he said no honestly i can't stand my work i said well it looked like you were having fun up in front of all of us he said oh no 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 you don't understand this this is my playtime. my work is when i'm practicing for hours and hours until my fingers bleed until I can get this right. My work is loading up my van with one hand to get out to the venues to drive clear across town. I can't stand my work. I love my play. So we look at that as it relates to a real estate agent. See, your work is to practice your skill, to know what to say, to know how to say it, right? Your playtime is when you're actually in front of a prospect, soon to be a client and a commission check. And that's what we all want. Not about that. So any questions, concerns, challenges about maybe what we've talked about so far? What are your key takeaways? Talk to me. Sean, can I ask you, what, what's, what would you say, like just that initial phone call? You know, you get the list from Land Voice or whatever you're using. You know, here's the list of FISBOs, whatever I want to call them. You know, and there are agents that focus on that. So all of a sudden you call that FISBO and they've had, you know, eight, you're the eighth person that's called. Yeah, you know, as a, yeah I mean, great whatever, question, Jeff. What, what's, what's the best script, like the best way to get in the door? What would you say? Okay, I've got six different lead-in scripts that will allow you to set appointments with for sale by owners. I'll share one with you today. Uh, and this is, uh, this is a term that I coined, pause momentum. Pause momentum. Now, the challenge in calling for sale by owners, and I know it just like you do, is the moment they know you're a realtor, what do they want to do? They want to end the call right? <laughs> as quickly as possible. And so here's the challenge. A lot of people, they want to call it for sale by owner. They'll say something like, hi, this is Sean Kokoska with EXP Realty. And they pause, they take a breath. And what does the FISBO do? I'm not paying a commission click, right? You didn't even get a chance to get the words out of your mouth. You have no opportunity to display your value proposition. So I, I came up with this uh, scripting or, or this and let me back up. See, 55% of our ability to connect with people and truly influence them, it's based on body language. So it's nonverbal. Now you're on the telephone, so 55% of your ability to connect with these people, it's out the window. 
Now, 38% of our ability to connect with them and truly influence them is based on our uh, tonality, our inflections, our rate of speech, and our use of pause. Okay? And 7% of our ability to connect with people is the words that we use. Now, I place an extreme emphasis on the words that we use because I believe that words create energy and emotion. You all go with me on this, right? So I came up with this, this term, I call it pause momentum because it enables you as a teleprospector to get the words out of your mouth that need to be said and heard. So pay attention and, and see if you, uh, if, let's just say you're up for sale by owner and you want to interrupt me and say, I'm not paying the commission, yet when I pause, you'll find that it would be completely inappropriate for you to interrupt me, right? And that's what pause moment does for us. So it'd be something like, may I speak with Mr. Jones, please? Hi, Mr. Jones, this is Sean Kokoska with EXP Realty, and I'm sure that you've had several realtors calling trying to list your home. I'm not calling for that purpose. You see, I'm a buyer specialist, meaning 70% of my time is invested working with buyers. So let me ask, once you sell your home, all on your own, without paying a commission, let me just ask, where, where do you plan on moving to? So it enables you to kind of get the words out of your mouth that you choose to say, and they it would be inappropriate for them to interrupt you at certain times. Yeah. So here's another version of that. Let's say you're a buyer specialist on the team. Um, you'd call up and say, may I speak to Mr. Jones, please? Hi, Mr. Jones, this is Sean Kokoska with EXP Realty, and I'm sure you've had several realtors current to, trying to list your home for sale. I'm not calling for that purpose. You see, I'm a buyer specialist, meaning all I do is work with buyers. In fact, 100% of my time is spent working with buyers. So tell me, once you sell your home, all on your own, without paying a commission, where do you plan on moving to? You gotta get the words out of your mouth, right? That's really good. So most for sale by owners are gonna stay local to the market. They might be empty nesters, downsizing. They might be in a move up situation. So they're gonna sell a $500,000 home and buy a million dollar home. Yet this is your opportunity to earn their business on the buy side of the fence. So they say, well, we're looking to move up north, we're looking to downsize, whatever they say. That's fantastic. I'd like to simply set an appointment to preview your home. See, I've got many buyers that I work with. I'd like to compare the features and benefits of your property to the needs of my buyers. I mean, perhaps I can make a, a fit. By the way, if I were to bring you an offer from one of my buyers through my company, would you accept that offer from my company? So oh, I'm not going to pay any commission. Well, let me just rephrase that. If I were to bring you an offer from one of my buyers that's acceptable to you, would you accept that offer through my company? Now notice I'm not changing the words, I'm just emphasizing acceptable to you, right? Meaning the buyer might pay the commission, we might go over the request price to cover the cost of the commission, yet would you accept the offer through my company? So yeah, that'd be perfect. What's the best time for me to stop by and just preview your property? Is it weekdays or weekends? That's awesome. Setting the appointment for first on my owner, guys, that's the easiest thing you'll ever do. It truly is. I mean, yeah. you'll set an appointment 80% of the time. Now remember, 7% of our ability to influence them is the words that we use, right? I think it's more just the energy, the enthusiasm that's going to get you in the door. Once you're in the door, you preview the property with them, take great notes, ask great questions, focus on building rapport, compliment them. And once you're in rapport, it's those four scripts, right? Single greatest advantage, four different types of buyers, the jewelry store watch script, share the NAR statistics. Oh, and by the way, are you familiar with what I do to get them so quickly for top dollar? But luckily I'm here. And you've just converted it, a pop buy, into a listing opportunity. Is with me on this? Now there are other strategies out there. Like I speaking to John Mendelson, we're gonna be doing a, a webinar together here in just a couple of weeks on for sale by owners and expired listings. Now John made a career out of for sale by owners and expired. So he's got some unique philosophies that I wanna to bring to light to all of you. I mean, it's a free webinar. All you have to do is go to icloncoaching.com, go to events, and you'll be able to register for, for this upcoming webinar. Yep. Um, one of the strategies he used was, okay, for sale by owner, I know that you're planning to sell your home without paying commission, yet why not take advantage of the best of both worlds? Meaning, I'll put it in MLS for you. I'll go through all the process of marketing and everything else. And if you sell your home, if you identify the buyer, well, you don't have to pay me a darn thing. Yet if I bring you the offer, well, here's what the commission structure would look like. 
So it, it enables you to keep your ad on for sale banner.com. It keeps it keep your ad on Zillow. It doesn't much matter yet if I bring you the offer, if it's acceptable to you, you pay this commission to me, this commission to the buyer's agent, you have your thumbs. Now we know that uh, you know pre-COVID, 83% of for sale buyers ultimately listed with a real estate professional. Those days are coming back. Remember, FSBO, it's an acronym. Fastest source of business opportunity. Now, expired listings. Let's talk a little bit about expires. And gang, there's only one reason that a listing expires. What do you suppose that is? That's right, it's overpriced, right? You say, no, no, it's a location. No, I, I, I've sold homes that backed up to eight lane highways, guys, with 50 decibels of noise in the backyard. You couldn't even have a conversation in the backyard, let alone want to go out there. Yet we were able to sell, sell those properties because we priced them appropriately. So I, I can't tell you how many expired listings that I took that I asked the seller, I said, how many times did your agent ask you to improve the price? Now the agent had listed for six months and the, the seller would say, no, they never asked me to improve the price. In fact, I even called the agent and said, should we adjust the price? And the, the agent talked them out of adjusting the price. Why do you suppose that is? <laughs> See, I think it's because the agent told them, this is the price that I can sell it for, right? And so they were embarrassed. They didn't want their ego to be bruised at all by asking them for a price improvement. And by the way, we never say price reduction. It's price improvement. We're going to improve the price, right? All right, so there are five common objections when doing expired calling. An accelerated breakthrough, we've got like four or five different lead in scripts that are to set the appointment for you. Yeah, there are five common objections that we practice these, rehearse these, as you'll overcome those objections. Get the appointment, take the listing. That's what we all want, right? So what questions do you have about expires, notice of default, for sale by owners, circle prospecting? In fact, let, let's just open it up to kind of a mastermind, if you will, a little bit of a brainstorm here. I See, I believe that the smart people, they learn from their own mistakes. You guys with me? I mean, as Brian Bear said, when you make a mistake, only three things you should do. Number one, admit it, meaning you got to own your mistakes, right? Number two, learn from it. And number three, never repeat it, right? <laughs> See, this requires us to adopt maybe a different kind of a mindset where most realtors that I know, they're into fixing things, right? I'm going to fix this, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to put out this fire and that fire. They feel more like a firefighter than they do a professional. How many of you guys have ever felt like a firefighter in real estate? Anyone? I mean, you're putting out fires left and right, right, left. And it's just, it's one thing after the next, after the next. See, one thing I love about real estate is that it's a very calm, relaxing, and predictable business, right? Yeah, that's a joke. <laughs> it's nowhere close. So the new mindset that I think we must adopt it's not a fix, fix, fix mindset. It's about fix, prevent, prevent, prevent. See, anytime you have a frustration in your business, just recognize it's not you. It's not your prospects. It's not your clients, your team, your vendors. None of that. It's simply the lack of a system. So when something happens, it's a frustration. You either sit down or pull your team together and say, Okay, this happened. Yes, it's frustrating. I'm not into blaming or complaining or anything like that. No victim mentality. I recognize it's simply the lack of a system. So what can I do? What can we do to make sure that this frustration never, ever comes up again? What is the system that is required? So when we restate our frustrations in the form of the system, this is how great businesses are built. Now, there's four key categories of leverage, okay, gang? Number one, models. So I'm talking about your economic model, your budgeting model, lead generation and lead conversion models. And if you choose to leverage through people, your compensation models as well. And those of you that are focused on building a team. Hey there. Yeah, yeah. I can come let you in. And in fact, call Bella. Sorry, guys. Can you call Mary Bella? She is. All right, sorry about that. 
my mother owns a, a house right down Mission Beach from us here, and she just took the walk over to bring coffee or something. I'm not sure. But uh, how, how many of you guys know Diana Kokoska? Know of her, heard of her? Yeah. yeah, so we wrote the bold training program together at Kelly Williams. Has over 700,000 graduates to that program, arguably the best real estate training program that, that's ever been created. Now, with that said, I created Accelerated Breakthrough to really compete with that whole program, right? And we've had uh, thousands and thousands of graduates of uh, Accelerated Breakthrough. It's life changing, you guys. Individuals who engage in that program and actually do the work are literally doubling, tripling, quadrupling their production. I see some familiar faces on here. People that have been through that program, it's fantastic. All right, sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but uh, systems, you guys. So we're talking about leverage. We're talking about leverage, right? So models is first. Second to that is systems. Now, a system to me is a standardized process that produces a consistent and predictable result. You do it the same way each and every time to get that consistent, predictable result in your business. Your category is technology. So many of you are leveraging through KD Core, or maybe you're on the same platform, a follow-up boss, or whatever you're on, the best CRM on the face of the planet is the one you know how to use, right? And then the fourth category is of leverage is people. Now, I would encourage you to think in terms of three words. And Kathy, how much time do we have today? You have about 30 more minutes. Oh, fantastic. More than I thought. Good stuff. Um, so three powerful words that I'd encourage you to leverage daily. Okay, it's who, not you. Who, not you. It's also who, not how, right? Who, not how. See, when I think of doing something unique or different here at Icon Coaching, maybe I'm going to launch a new program. Maybe I'm going to, uh, like we're going to do the, the Texas tour, by the way, uh, where we're going to hit every major market in Texas every six weeks, live events. See, anytime you think about doing something like that, I have to be honest with myself and say, Sean, you're, you're only proficient at maybe 25% of the tactical work associated with that role. Now, I get to invest the time, the energy, the money, the resources to master the other 75%, yet Malcolm Gladwell will tell you that it takes 10,000 hours to master anything. I do know one thing for sure is that there is a who out there who understands the how. Somebody who's already got their 10,000 hours in place, all I have to do is find that person. See, once you get into business at a, at a very high level and you focus on you know, scalability, you focus on increasing your net income, your net worth, you recognize that whatever business you're in, like for example, you're not a real estate agent, you're a recruiter. Simply put, you're a recruiter of talent. See, in the US, we already use, uh, live a very highly leveraged life. Would you guys agree with that? All right, for example, how many of you guys wearing a shirt today? Anyone? Good. I'm glad you are, right? Did you make that shirt? Of course you didn't make it, right? No, you paid a company who paid somebody who probably paid somebody who paid somebody to make that shirt. And it ended up on the rack at the, at the store and you just bought it, right? So you've got to apply that type of thinking to your business development. I don't care if it's real estate sales, if it's agent attraction. Guys, it's who, not you. It's who, not you. So let me... Uh, I'm going to open up a, I'm just going to share my, my screen here momentarily. Yet, I, I want to walk you through this model, what they call the model toward mastery. Bear with me one second. It's there. Here we go. Now, if you choose to draw this out, it's going to end up uh, in the shape of a pyramid. It'll have five sections of pyramid. So if you want to draw a pyramid, just draw four horizontal lines down the middle, create five sections to this pyramid. I'd encourage you to write this out because it's a game changer from my perspective. So it starts with the word foundation. Okay? Now, the foundation is our state of being. It's how we show up in the world, our clients, our prospects, our past clients, heck, even our friends and family members. Some of the four things that impact the strength and the depth and the width and the rebar that we have within our foundation. So knowledge, your skills, your mindset, and your habits. So knowledge, in essence, you've got to know what to do and you've got to know what to say. Our skills, you've got to know how to do it and how to say it. And like I said earlier, 
within your words when you know what to say, you know how to say it, and you say it to enough people, you can make millions of dollars in real estate sales. Now, when we focus on the first two key categories, knowledge and skills, it has an immediate impact on our competence. It leads to a higher level of confidence. It almost magically impacts the strength of our mindset. Now, I think 95% of our success in business is in fact mindset. You know, Henry Ford said it best so many years ago, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you were right, yeah. And then the fourth category is our habits. Now, at the core of everything that we do, you guys, it's our habits. Researchers estimate that only 3% of the time are we actually functioning outside of habitual behavior. And yet, let's have an honest moment. Where do most people form habits? Is it consciously or subconsciously? Undoubtedly, it's mostly subconsciously. So part of what we do with the Accelerated Breakthrough Program and in our one of the coaching is we get you tuned in to the actions that are worth building habits around. Now, this is important, and I'm going to reference a quote from a guy named F.M. Alexander. He said it best. He said, people do not decide their future, they decide their habits. And their habits decide their future. So bringing conscious awareness to the actions, the activities that are worth building habits around, I think is a critical element of extraordinary results. So when I think of this, let me digress. Many of you have heard the story before, but I have to share it again because it's, it's the biggest epiphany, the biggest, whatever you want to call it, aha, <laughs> that I've ever received in my life. And I was really fortunate to get this at a very early age. I was 17 years old when this, this awareness kind of showed up. Now, a little backstory. My wife and I are high school sweethearts. We met in seventh grade, started dating when we were 16. Married at 21, first child at 28. Three beautiful kids now and getting ready to celebrate 30 years of marriage this coming September. So with that said, uh, we're 17 years old. It's a Friday night. We decided we're going to go see a movie. And we invited her older sister. She's four years older than we were. And uh, I agreed to have a drive. So I pull up to the house to pick these guys up. I'd never met a boyfriend before, but he comes out of the house. And this dude, I, I got to tell you, he was, he was built. So I'm telling you, this guy had like biceps the size of my thighs. He had like 10% body fat, just totally shredded. He was a, a bodybuilder professional. I mean, he did competitions and everything else, right? He looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, I'm 17 years old, and I want to look like this guy. So I got to know him a little bit. His name's Paul. I said, hey, Paul, uh, tell me, how often do you go to the gym? And he said, well, every day. I said, even Sundays. I said, yeah. I said, how long do you work out? I said, well, at least two hours. I said, two hours every day, Paul. I'm 17 years old. I have a hard time to do it two, three times a week, let alone every day for two hours. How do you do it? And he looked at me like I was crazy, you guys. And he said, and this was the aha, by the way. I said, John, it's uh, just something I do. Like, it's no big deal. See, what Paul has done is he took that activity of going to the gym and he brought it to the position of what I call automaticity. Meaning it's part of his self-image, his personal paradigm. This is who Paul is. This is what Paul does. And guess what? Paul gets to look the way Paul looks, right? So how about you? I mean, what is that activity in real estate sales that if you simply brought that to the position of automaticity or a habit, that your business could look amazing? Go ahead and unmute yourself. I want to hear from a few of you. What is that activity that's worth building a habit around for you? For me, Sean, it would be on the follow-up side, getting that follow-up into a habit that I'm committed to to do it when I say I'm going to do it. That's fantastic. And if it broke up a little bit on the end for me, could you guys all hear that? So it's, it's consistent lead and follow-up is what I heard. Is that right? Just doing what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it to yeah. earn the business the prospect you're mad about that. Yet one of the major reasons that people do not convert leads to a high level is in fact lead follow-up. Now, top producer in coordination with Five Street did a case study for all of us. Now, these are agents that are paying for these leads. Average cost per lead was about $7.50 per lead. And they were able to, through the, the app and the voice over IP, be able to track how many times the realtor attempted to reach a prospect, the lead that they paid for, how many times do you think that was on average? Yeah, 
It's 1.2 times on average. Then they threw the lead away. Now, thanks to the digital revolution, you know, companies like Zillow and Realtor.com and your personal IDX websites, buyer and seller prospects can now self-identify way too early in the pipeline, right? So thanks to the digital marketing revolution, there's now two distinct phases. Number one is what I call the dreaming phase, right? This is generally when leads kind of self-identify. They, they can't sleep one night, so they jump on Zillow and they complete a web form or whatever, right? And the realtor gets it, oh, I got a lead, and they're all excited. Well, it's not, it's not a prospect. It's barely even a suspect at this point because they're in the dreaming phase, right? They're just thinking about it. My wife and I have sold our home last October, bought a new one, and then we talked about it for three years leading up to it, right? Seriously, she's she's all over Zillow. She's checking everything out. And, you know, I got agents calling me on my cell phone saying, are you looking to buy? <laughs> I'm thinking, no, we're in the dreaming phase, right? Now, here's the, uh, and by the way, the second category would be the buying or listing phase, right? So the biggest challenge is that if we ignore them, when they're in the dreaming phase, well, they're gonna ignore us when they get to the buying or listing phase, right? So it's about consistent follow-up and nurturing and so on and so forth, because most of these prospects that come to you through digital marketing, you know, they're B buyer prospects at best. So let's just identify and define, what is an A buyer in your opinion? Now I wanna talk about the buyer set defense because that's gonna become more and more important uh, as the months months go by, yes. Right, for the last three years, you didn't want buyers. They were a pain in the butt. You know what I mean? I mean you take them out, find the home, you write the offer, you go above the request price, and then you have to write seven or eight offers for each buyer to finally get them under contract or something, right? So for the last three years, we didn't want buyers yet. I, I think as, as the market shifts, I think we're going to want buyers, trust me. And when you systemize that side of the, the business, when the buyer side of your business becomes smooth and fluid and replicatable, it's simple, right? Like in session number seven of Accelerated Breakthrough, I, I talk you through what I call the 20 point buyer presentation. Okay, this is a system. See, when I got into the real estate industry, I was probably one of the first buyer's agents on the face of the planet. Right? The model didn't exist back then. Yet my mother and I, we decided we're going to start a real estate sales team together. We went to Green Max. And within 12 months, I'd worked the buyer side of the fence and increased my production to over 100 buyer closings a year with one unlicensed assistant. And the, one of the big reasons for that is because the system, the 20 point buyer presentation. See, I was the agent who would just run out the door and I would show you any house you wanted to see, right? I didn't qualify. I, didn't, I mean, I just, I just said, how high would you said jump? You understand? And yet, after being burned multiple times, wasting my time and spinning my wheels, I made a decision that I was going to systemize the side of the business. See, I, I read a book by a guy named Michael Gerber. It's called The E Myth, The Myth of the Entrepreneur. I fell in love with the book. In fact, I, as a 21-year-old kid, spent $10,000 to fly out to San Diego and spent three days with Michael Gerber and uh, got my EMIT certification. I came back to the office on fire, man. I wanted to systemize everything. And this was an experiment that almost failed, quite frankly. It almost failed because in, in my efforts to systemize the buyer side of business, um, I went through a lot of brain damage. <laughs> See, I wasn't proficient at setting appointments to have buyers come into the office. So what I did is I, I developed and mastered a strategy that called the ABCs of selling. It stands for action, benefit, commitment. I wasn't very good at that. I wasn't good at closing. Um, I would ask questions like, well, would you like to get together? And they would say no. <laughs> you know? So rather, I, I had to up my game, right? And the end result, though, was multiple in-office buyer appointments every week multiple signed buyer agents and contracts every week. And, you know, as a 22 year old kid, several $100,000 commission months as a direct result of just focusing on a system. Now in session seven of Accelerated Breakthrough, you get that system, you get all the digital assets, you get the PowerPoint slide deck, you get the buyer workbook, <coughs> excuse me, a full length video of me showing you the buyer presentation. This can become really, really important in the coming months. You're gonna actually want to fire for your life. So it's a mindset shift, is it not? All right, let's go back to the ABCs. I want to spend a little bit of time on that. Um, so when the when that magic moment uh, for you to close for an appointment shows up, I would encourage you to leverage the ABCs. So to start with the action, what do you want this prospect to do? 
And in this case, let's set an appointment to meet at your office. Or let's set an appointment to meet at your office or Starbucks or Regis or your mortgage company's office, title company's office. Here's my input. I, I would love for you to focus on setting appointments in a professional environment whenever possible. See so if you just run out and meet them at the house like I was doing when I first got in real estate, their focus and their energy is not on you, is it? No, it's on the house. And it's really hard to do a buyer presentation and get a signed buyer agent's a contract when you're showing somebody a house, right? So I, I would encourage you to kind of back up a little bit. Let's up the professionalism of our game and let's get them in a professional environment so they can focus on you and what you have to say. Because I'll tell you what, that 20 minutes you spend with the buyer before running out and showing their homes is going to save you hours and hours and hours in the future. You're going to be able to set and then manage the appropriate expectations with your buyers. And I think, you know, working the buy side of the fence is nothing more and nothing less than simply setting and managing appropriate expectations. You know, a very simple example of that is a typical agent, they're going to take the buyer out. Let's say it's a difficult buyer and you show them 30 houses. They finally narrow it down. How many of you guys been there? Have to show them 30 houses, anyone? And they finally narrow it down to the one that they want to make an offer on. And what type of an offer do they generally want to make? It's a low ball offer, right? That you know is not going to be accepted. And you don't need practice writing contracts, do you? No, you want to write contracts that actually stick, yes? So whose fault is that, by the way? See, I think it's the agent's fault because they failed to set and then manage the appropriate expectations, yeah? Or how many of you have lost out um, on a commission because the buyer went behind your back and bought it for sale by another? Anybody? Anyone other than me? <laughs> yeah. If it hasn't happened to you yet, you probably haven't been doing it long enough or you've got the system in place to make sure that it never happens, right? But again, whose fault is that? See, realtors are, all, are constantly saying things like, oh, buyers are liars. <laughs> Not necessarily true. I think it's the realtor who failed to qualify the buyer, set and manage the appropriate expectations. Therefore, they accuse the buyer of being a liar because, of course, it could be their fault, right? Yet the 20 point buyer presentation came from that fixed prevent, prevent mindset that we're talking about. If I added up the lost commission dollars that it cost me to put this presentation together, you guys, it would be well into the seven figures. See, every time I got burned or lost out on the commission, I just added another step. I added another script. I added something to this slide or that slide so that when I sat down with people that I could give the presentation and the natural byproduct is a signed buyer agency agreement. Okay, I will tell you that from first appointment to signed buyer agency agreement, for me, was 100%. Every single time I got a signed buyer agency contract. Now, with that said, there were caveats. Sometimes... If they weren't comfortable with it, I'd have to type in under special permissions. The buyer can terminate the agreement at any time. We just written notice, give it to me. Yet 100% of the time, I got signed by the contract. So back to the ABCs. Action first, what do you want to do? Set an appointment to meet in a professional environment. Okay? Or you can even jump on a Zoom meeting. I mean, thanks to technology today, when I was back in production and Zoom were around, I probably wouldn't have had them in the office. I just done it. You know, over Zoom, and then I would share my screen. I'd walk them through the buyer agency agreement, email it for e signatures, and be done, right? Benefit. Why would a buyer prospect want to meet with you? What's in it for them? Talk to me, okay? Let's brainstorm this. What's in it for them? Why do they want to meet with you? Uh, the ability to see a bunch of houses, to be guided, to help with the negotiation. No, Kelly, absolutely. Let's keep it going. What are some other benefits? Why would a buyer want to meet with you? What's in it for them? Open up, guys. Who wants to share? Um, in Alabama, we're a non disclosure state. So I. I try to make it to where I can help you with your due diligence if, you know, I've got a buyer's agency assigned. Very good. So you're going to represent them through the due diligence to make sure that they're making a sound investment. It's fantastic. Way to go. Somebody else, what's in it for them? Why would they want to meet with you? Nikki Trim said, I'm going to help you achieve your goals. 
fantastic, Kathy. Yes, I'm going to help you accomplish your goals in real estate sales. Okay, perfect. What else? The seller's represented. I'm here to represent you. I'm here to gotcha. fight for you. Yes, you know, a thousand percent. I'm with you. See, guys, there are multiple benefits, and it really depends on the prospect you're talking to. It's for the first time buyer. Because the benefit for a first-time buyer is going to be different than a seasoned investor. Because with yeah, multiple benefits, how many do you have access to off-market opportunities? Anyone? How about for sale by owners, expired listings? These are off-market opportunities. Are not. So after you articulate your benefit, then it's simply segue right into the commitment and its alternative choice, right? So tell me, when is the best time for you and I to get together? Is it weekdays or weekends? So let me demonstrate real fast. Uh, you know, fortunately, in order to get one step closer to achieving your goals, all we need to do now is simply set an appointment for you to meet at my office. I'm going to download all the photos, the virtual tours, the floor plans, the drone footage. That way you can view them on screen in my office before wasting your time or gas and driving by them. Now, additionally, I'm going to share with you several off-market opportunities these are homes that are currently on the market. If nobody knows about them, just me and my team, and I'd love to share that information with you. And then finally, I'm going to walk you through several key negotiating strategies that will help you get the best price in the way you can buy. So tell me, when is the best time for you to get together? Is it weekdays or weekends? Action first. See, anytime you ask a prospect to do something, I mean anything, there's a question that occurs with them. It's the old with them acronym, W I I F M. What's in it for me? So by outlining the benefit, you think of an answer to that question. <clears throat> Segway right into the alternative choice card. Simple as ABC. Yes. Practice that. Master that. Nothing's going to stop you. You're going to set up for that appointment and get signed by your agencies and listing contracts. Left and right. Okay. So back to this model toward mastery. I just want to finish this thought before we run out of time. The next phase of this model is your pipeline phase. So it's everything that you're doing proactively, reactively to identify and earn the business and the prospects in the marketplace today. This also has to include follow-up, conversion, and accelerate breakthrough. We walk you through our seven-step formula to the lead conversion conversation. Now, this is arguably the, the most effective script strategy that will help you double, triple, or quadruple your conversion rates. And if you increase your conversion rates by just 2%, let's say you're generating 100 leads a month, 2% increase in lead conversion, guys. That's too much to get some love. That's 24 a year. Your average GCI per deal is 10 grand. That's almost a quarter million dollars in additional revenue because you improved your knowledge and your skills. All right. So beyond the pipeline phase, and it takes tenacity, yet we'll get you there is to the position of momentum. Now, momentum is one of my favorite words, you guys. To me, it's the greatest magnifier in the world, meaning. When we lack momentum, we look 10 times worse than we actually look. And when we possess momentum, guess what? We get to look 10 times better. Now, a lot of agents, they get to this position with momentum. To me, that's you know, five to seven pending contracts. But what happens is they start focusing on that 80% work piece getting 20% work. Now, I'm referencing Pareto's principle here, the 80 20 rule. Now, in real estate sales, 20% of your actions and activities will yield at least 80% of the results. Yet sadly, I see most agents, they invest you know, maybe three to 5% of their time into the 20% effort, and the rest of the time they put into the 80% work. The 80% work is you know, all that stuff that needs to be done, but it doesn't move the needle for your production or your bank account revenues. These things like transaction coordination, inspection negotiations, attending final walkthroughs or meeting appraisers, or you know, all that 80% stuff. See, to me, the goal is to leverage off the 80% stuff to give them an important amount of time to 20% effort. There's just five things on that job description, you guys. Go ahead and write this down. Number one is practice. To improve your knowledge and your skills, right? Number two is lead generation. Number three is lead follow-up. Going on appointments and negotiating contracts. And so the only five things that are going to move the needle for your production to increase your level of income. Now, a lot of agents, they get to the position of momentum, you know, five to seven pending contracts, and they get sucked down to the 80% stuff, don't they? They're holding the hand of the client. They're 
dealing with the inspectors and the contractors, the mortgage companies, the title companies, and what happens to the pipeline phase of the business when they get sucked down to the end of the summer? Doesn't it generally dry up? Yeah, so they work hard to get the momentum just next month to fall back down to the pipeline. So January is terrible. They're thinking, I'm going to quit real estate sales. I can't stand this business anymore, right? I'm going to go get a real job. But they work hard in January. They get a few pending contracts. And then through the month of February, though, they get sucked down in the weeds, right? They're doing the transactional work. So January sucked, yet February is pretty awesome, right? They're thinking, I love real estate. I love being a realtor. But what happens in March? <laughs> oh, I'm going to quit. <laughs> but then April's pretty darn good, right? And it's this cyclical level of production and income. It's a lot of stress, anxiety, worry. You guys, that is a short word to burn out. So once you get to the position of momentum, it's about going to the position of leverage. And as I said, there's four categories of leverage. Yes, you need to Just stay right up front. Okay. All right. Uh, model systems, technology, and entertainment. To finally reach this position of mastery, yet to me, it's a lifetime journey. 10,000 hours. That's all it takes to master anything. That's it. Just 10,000 hours, right? It's a lifetime journey. Jeff, go ahead. Just, and this is, I just wanted to catch this before we need to go. Not to end the backtrack here, just real quick. Do you have a good, what's a good script that you could give us for calling expireds? You had a couple, you had a great one there with the FISBOs. What's a good one that you would yeah. recommend for expireds? Because we are okay. seeing more of those for sure. Yeah, I've got five lead in scripts that are all part of accelerated breakthrough. Yet, uh -huh. you know, remember, 90% of anything gang is just showing up. Even a salesperson with a ton of skill, if they have enough conversations, you're going to set more appointments, right? So, it'd be something simple like, uh, Hi, this is Sean Kokoska with DXP Realty, and I'm calling to notify you that your home has been rejected by the market. It's been expired from the multiple listing service. And I'm curious, when do you plan on hiring the right agent to get your home sold? Oh, that's good. Just really simple, very direct, right? I don't like this beating around the bush or going in the side door. Just something very, very direct. Has some common phraseology that, that definitely helps is, you know, me and my team, we specialize in working with expired listings. Sometimes even the best homes don't sell the first time around. It just takes a unique approach for marketing. Like my team is just to get home so quickly for top dollar. Tell me, when is the best time for you to get together with you? So we get your you know, just show up, close for the appointment. Guys, yes, people are going to say no, and that's okay. You're going to learn from the experience. Remember, fix, prevent, prevent, right? Well, it goes back to what you really started with, and you've said a couple of times, Sean. It's really all about how many times do we say it. That's right. And how many people you say it to. Right. 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 If you say it enough to enough people, you're going to generate the business that you want to generate. You know, so that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 11 o'clock, Sean. Thank you so much. Before we finish, um, I put in the chat, guys, um, Sean, you know, is a master, as you can tell, um, and he has created a lot of training programs in his career, and he has the Icon Coaching Program. I put the link in there. He has a 16-week accelerated breakthrough class that is all about, you know, sales and all the scripts he has in there is 20 point buyer presentation. He actually has in there a recording of him doing his buyer presentation with buyers so that you are hearing his word for word um, verbiage as he is going through his presentation. Um, I took that course last year and it's phenomenal. So if you want to up your real estate game and really hone in your skills, I highly, highly recommend it. Like I said, I put the link in the chat um, and then Sean, why don't you talk, you changed the format a little bit. So they get the workbook and then they can watch the video. Um, now they watch the, the weekly video that of, of you doing um, your icon coaching. And then, you, and then they come on weekly with a mastermind with you to go yes. over the content. Is that correct? That's correct. So we have, uh, so you watch the replays of the videos and then every Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock central, we do a 30 minute live coaching session where it's more of a mastermind where you get to ask questions based on you know, where you're at in the program. So you can be in session five or you can be in session 15. Just keep showing up to the live weekly training and we're just going to keep inspiring you and motivating you to get through the 16 weeks to complete the assignments between sessions. And it's a game changer, guys. It will literally have a double triple Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, a, like, it's a one-time payment of just three hundred and fifty dollars. Like it's just a no brainer, right? It's yeah. A, it's a complete no brainer. Like I said, I have it, so this process, you guys. And I do have to jump to a coaching session right now, you guys. Thank you so much for your focus. Thank you, Sean. Kathy, Jeff, thanks for putting this together. Kim, yep. appreciate all you guys. Take care. Talk thanks, soon. Sean. Thanks, My Sean. Pleasure. Bye -bye, Thank you guys. Hey, real quick, um, guys, before you go, just a quick reminder. Uh, we do this every Tuesday. Okay. It's open to all agents, all companies. If you're a guest with us, thank you for being here. Um, you're always welcome. If you want a recording of this, we will have that available here within the next hour or so. Um, I'll try and get that. I'll definitely get it up on our uh, workplace group, uh, Freedom Team Workplace group. If you're outside of EXP and you want it, we can email it to you. Just a quick reminder tomorrow, same time, Eric, uh, Eric is going to be interviewing um, Brent Gove. And if you don't know Brent Gove, Brent was, uh, you know, the number 11 REMAX agent in the world. Uh, he ended up being the team leader at the biggest Keller Williams office in the country out in California um, for eight years prior to moving over to EXP. He's got a huge organization uh, at EXP just um, and still doing just a ton of real estate. So anyway, we're going to have a great talk with him for probably, a, you know, a good, you know, 45 minutes to an hour tomorrow. Um, same time if you it's the same link that you're on right now, you're more than welcome to join in on that. Any of you, even guests, come on in. Uh, there'll be some great stuff. Uh, Brent's just on top of everything. So anyway, guys, um, Kathy, anything else you want to throw out there? Nope, I, I was going to do the reminder. So okay, welcome. cool. Nope. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Have a great week. If Have we can help you at all, let us know. We're here. Okay. We'll see you. All right. Bye, y'all.